Hi everyone, this is the group Management Mavericks and the name of our show is General Insurance Services. So who is Management Mavericks? Over the semester we have utilized group work and communication to become a team. The students that make up our group include Christy Thor, Lauren Siles, Haley Hill, Caitlin Steakley, and Adam Boggs. Before I get into introducing our characters, I want to discuss a few of our key management concepts we chose while producing our show over the course of the semester, and they also helped us to create our character personas. We decided to use the terms whistleblowing, training, ethical decision making, and centralized versus decentralized structures of organization. Melinda is the employee who is considered to be too much of a social butterfly. She is so much of a free spirit and friendly and individual that she doesn't realize the unintentional grief and issues that she causes for her coworkers. She's away from her desk more than she is present, and this causes conflict and other workers to become upset. Melinda doesn't always realize how long she is away until she returns. The other employees are frustrated with her as they have to pick up her slack. Caitlin is a very dedicated employee with getting her work done, and she enjoys mentoring those who need help. She's an extrovert who perceives with feelings rather than thinking. By that meaning, she will help out even when her cup is already full because it's morally the right thing to do. She has strong judgment and intuition skills that help her at the end into a managerial position. Nikolai is a very personable, easy to get along with fellow employee. He shows up on time and is trustworthy. Nikolai is infamous for breaking up awkward tension in the office with humor. Along with Nick's ability to get along with everyone comes a weakness in the form of appeasement. This sometimes gets him into trouble due to the fact that he doesn't want to get in the middle of issues but somehow always finds himself there. He also feels he has an obligation to help or protect his colleagues from trouble and in and out of the workplace. Giselle is a charismatic employee that loves her job. She isn't afraid to speak her mind and the employees love her for that. Her blunt personality has also been instrumental to her success at General Insurance Services. She works well under stressful situations and is always open to constructive criticism. She is fine with not being in a leadership position monitoring her coworkers as long as everyone is doing their part. And lastly, Miranda. She's quiet and reserved, who is sweet, kind, but fierce. She's laid back, but will take control of a situation at a moment's notice. She tends to keep to herself and focus on her work. However, she is close friends with Caitlin. Miranda enjoys helping others to the best of her ability and will do that what she can to see people smile if it is making them laugh at her rather than with her. She is usually underestimated as people take her kindness as weakness. And with our characters, we chose them because they're relatable to people that we will confront or have already confronted in the workplace. So let's get to the introduction of our show. General Insurance Service is an insurance carrier for homeowners in Clearwater, Florida. Melinda is an employee who is a social butterfly, who has a tasteful attitude and is a free spirit worker who's been there for almost a year. Within a couple of months of working, being the social butterfly she is, she tends to get sidetracked and goes missing several times throughout the day. This has caused her productivity level to be below expectation and caused her group to pick up the work she isn't doing. In this TV show, General Insurance Services, our group decided to use several examples of the management work ethics we learned throughout this course and event that has happened to us in real life to put into our TV show. We create our characters based off of one of our team members' actual work group. Emphasizing the different attitude and work ethics of each of them, the dedicated worker, the slacker, the jokester, the one who speaks whatever is on their mind, and the calm, quiet one. Using this method has helped us come up with a generic storyline, but also epic, because we all can relate to the situation and everyone always has a co-worker who is like our character, Melinda. We wanted the same office setting as The Office show, but casting away from their character by putting them in our own personal characters and unique storyline. 
The management material we decided we will be using is centralized organizational structure, classical decision making, perception, SWOT analysis, manage strategically, leader role, whistleblowing, training, and overcoming resistance to change. These materials will create an issue for each episode and how we can come to a conclusion. I'm going to jump into the middle of our show for episodes three and four to demonstrate how we use some of our management concepts. In episode three, the social aspect of a work environment comes into play. Melinda is at the center of ridicule amongst her employees and the team morale towards her is becoming very annoyed. In an office setting, perception is everything. How Melinda perceives her relationship towards her coworkers is far different than how they feel. Perception, a way one sees a situation based on experiences, personality, and current needs, can be problematic for managers on the outside looking in. As a result of this ingrained concept, it is critical to ask others what their take on a given situation is before coming up with a solution. Perception ties under the individual decision-making process, which addresses how individuals and groups make decisions. This episode addresses the complaints of the coworkers all having to deal with Melinda's irresponsibility in her role as an employee at General Insurance Services. Because Melinda feels that she is on a friend basis with her coworkers, she takes advantage of her situation and repeatedly leaves her coworkers with additional responsibilities that belong to her. This scenario is common problem in work environments because being around coworkers on a weekly basis creates blurred lines of work and personal relationships. As expected, when Melinda leaves for her sick day, the team picks up her slack as they would if any other employee was absent. With their centralized organizational structure, upper management elects Caitlin to handle the majority of Melinda's workload. When Nikolai returns from his lunch break, he informs the office that he just saw Melinda's selfies she uploaded on Facebook of her at Bush Gardens. The team becomes irate because their personal productivity is hindered due to Melinda's absence and knowing she lied about an illness for her own benefit of having the day off, which creates a hostile environment. This episode is a direct reflection of the detrimental effects perception can have in an office setting. Because Melinda mixes personal relationships and work relationships, she takes advantage of her coworkers and feels their perception towards her is on a friend basis with being more lenient towards her work ethic, but really the productivity of the office suffers and she only forces her coworkers to resent her more. Moving on to episode four, organizational structure and organizational design were some of the terms that were used in an effort to convey the proper and appropriate structures needed for general insurance, and more specifically the sales team, to be most effective. If there is no clear line of authority, then there is no clear line of responsibility either, and that's where the real problems begin. Without responsibility, not all the initiative or necessary steps to complete or satisfy obligations. In episode 4, there is an apparent disconnect between management and the employee landing new policy sales at General Insurance. Also, matters are coming to a head regarding Melinda's lack of initiative and low productivity at work. Caitlin confines in Miranda on what has happened, and she seeks her advice on what she should do, and they both decide to whistleblow. As technology advances and new forms of correspondence emerge, this insurance company should be trying to keep pace in an evolving market. However, the employees responsible for sales feel the impact and know what is working and what is not. The floor supervisor in this episode knows that if this insurance company wants to succeed and raise revenues, then it needs to incorporate more differentiation, which should be performed by individuals with specialized skills. As it stands now, the boss Bob can't seem to get it done alone. Even though this episode contains five people who pretty much are tasked to do the same job, They individually have different ideas in a unique way that they perform their jobs. Caitlin, the soon-to-be floor manager, embodies integration by collectively forcing her organization to cooperate and interact with each other. Interdependence and pooled interdependence also plays a role in this episode because of the need to transition from one to another. As it stands now, one person depends on another to accomplish tasks. 
However, after the boss Bob hears what is happening with the team having to do extra work to compensate Melinda's absences and understands the productivity level is going down, he sees Caitlin's potential as a leader in the office and offers her a promotion to a supervisory position. From this point forward, the sales team has shifted to a more of a pooled interdependence and in where they collectively contribute to a common output. Will these circumstances, this will hopefully give their team the opportunity to have a more decentralized organizational structure that provides Caitlin with the flexibility to lead her team to different opportunities for success. Next, I'd like to go on to the milestones. And the execution of the milestones were what really allowed us to work as a team. And I wanted to re reiterate through each one in case it can help any future students taking this course while planning with the other members of their team. So for milestone one, our group uh, met for the first time at Panera Bread and after that on multiple other occasions to decide on the direction of our show. We decided on a schedule that would allow a leader to take charge each week and immediately began to brainstorm different ideas. We each contributed a show pitch and before our assignment was due, we had a team vote to decide on which one we thought would explain our management concepts in the most thorough way. For Milestone 2, our group created a Google Doc with a general outline and the names of the characters within the story. We were able to choose what character we wanted to portray. Individually, we were responsible for creating the description of who the individuals are and how they would respond to different environment changes. For Milestone 3, moving forward in the dialogue of our episodes, each team member was responsible for diving deeper into the management concepts for their character personas as well as their assigned episodes. This helped us by dividing the coursework in sections so that we each individually could focus on specifics of the concepts we wanted to portray. After Milestone 3, we had a much better understanding of the direction of our show. For Milestone 4, a Google document was created within our group with all the components of the booklet that needed work. We divided the work up between the five of us and were able to critique and add valued feedback to each other by sharing the same document. For some sections, all team members summarized their thoughts in two to three sentences, and the person responsible for the final product of that area combined all of our input into one response. This allowed our final booklet entry to be a reflection of each team member rather than individual responses. Following our weekly leader schedule, the person responsible for handing in our assigned work assembled the Google document into our final booklet. So how did we do it? How do we execute it? For the successfulness of our show, our team kept in weekly contact with one another, working around each other's busy schedules. Although this was difficult at times, since we all maintain different work, personal, and school lives, this taught us how to prioritize and implement a set schedule to give us a structure on completing each milestone along the way. Creating this schedule outline for what needed to be done each week meant assigning a team leader to be responsible for communicating, gathering everyone's input, and handing in each portion due. As we read deeper into management, we began implementing more management concepts into our show to complement our storyline. This was also helpful in creating the characteristics of each of our characters and how they dealt with the various obstacles along the way. Creating a storyline that was comparable to those entering into the workforce was key to the development and direction that we wanted to take it in. By developing real-life office scenarios, frustrations, and humor in the general insurance services branch, we were able to portray the management concepts that we learned this summer semester. And let me summarize what our group learned through applying these management concepts on a weekly basis with our assignments. Management is the ever-evolving practice of overseeing personal and coordinating con concepts and activities in an effort to adapt to changing times while achieving certain goals. Today's fast-paced and highly competitive markets are adopting new management styles which can dramatically change the direction of an organization. As these new management styles are taught and absorbed, a different breed of managers will be hitting the scene adding value to not only themselves, but also to those who employ them. 
So what will be different about them? Well, for starters, this new breed will be keenly aware of the importance in group troubleshooting and hypothesizing, allocating value to the opinions of subordinates and colleagues alike, as well as being a team player with the ability to not only, but to lead under pressure. The future of business is exciting, for we know with rapidly changing technology will come the need for those who can innovate and replicate their drive for success in others. How did the project help us learn the concepts? Well, for starters, on a group basis, we actually applied the concepts we were learning to working as a group. We also had to learn when to be a leader and when to take a step back. On an individual level, the reflection papers that used our real situation examples helped us apply them into the milestones and to distinguish our character personas, which we individually did. In addition, assigning an episode to each person helped to dive deeper into that concept that we were trying to portray. Management Mavericks has some advice for those future students. The advice our group would like to give those registering for this course would be to be prepared for what you're about to experience. This course is fast-paced, interactive, technology-based, packed full of brainstorming and troubleshooting, and loaded with information. We have found that success in this course is impossible without allocating time every week to not only getting your group's feedback and help, but also to give you the ability to stay on track. Technology is great, however, face-to-face -face meetings, especially early in group formation, is imperative. This will allow you to pick up all the important nonverbal communications needed in collaboration. Also, this is a great time to exchange email and phone numbers. You will use this more than you think. Google Docs has been a lifesaver in this course, mainly due to the fact that there are so many moving parts, and it's nice to have a localized place for the information to be written. Individually stored, update, saved, and viewable immediately and independently for every group member. Lastly, but probably the most important, is that there has to be a leader or leader, leaders specified early on. It will be more likely to be inherently known after the first meeting. This individual or individuals should be driven, dedicated, supportive, and patient. Our group has benefited from early deadlines, so to not be scrambling on Sunday night. We would advise you and your group to do the same. This gives several layers of proofing before final assignments are uploaded. And what would we do differently? Taking this class online proved challenging to gather the overall picture of what was expected for our final booklet. We were constantly questioning if the work we were doing is what we actually were supposed to be handing in. I think knowing now what we didn't know then, we would dumb down our story just a little bit so that we could portray our management concepts in a simpler format while also being able to focus more on our actual filming of the episodes. We realized later on that it was difficult to be able to film what we were trying to portray with stick figure drawings because our characters are so intricate and each episode had a lot going on. I want to encourage you to go through our playlist and take a look at our preview and our group also did a reflections video and we discussed how we each felt throughout the semester and some takeaways from it. So thanks for watching.